Okay, we're recording. So, um, welcome to Overflow, and then we are going to pray while Michelle is trying to get connected. <laughs> Father God, I just thank you for this time we can come together and we can discuss your word. And Father God, that we just ask that you uh, lead this this talk with through the Holy Spirit, and that you would guide us and um, that you would edify us and encourage us through these times. And I just thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, she's gone again. So. Jeez. I, <laughs> in and out, in and out. So, um, yeah. So Timothy and I have been talking. We're pretty much still on the same thing. I was on last week. <laughs> been talking about a lot about, um, about um, how to read the word um and interpret it because a lot of people like we was talking about last week a lot of people um take parts of the scripture out of context and right. and read it um and misinterpret it um for what it actually meant and for the times that it was what it was meant for because i think a lot of times we forget that um that they were in a different time and they didn't have the technology or the knowledge that we do today. So there was a lot of restrictions um, that um, he put in place just so for their health reasons. <laughs> like for pork, <clears throat> for example, he said, you know, don't eat pork. Well, there she is, kind of. Um, okay, is she unmuted? Hello, Tiffy. Hi, Tiffy. Okay. So I was just saying, Hi. catching everybody up, catching everybody up. Michelle's been in and out. She's trying to connect, but she's having issues. So, um, but I was just saying, reviewing what we were talking about last week, that um, we were talking about how to, to interpret the scripture and remember that um, there are certain things that applied to them at that time because they didn't have the knowledge that we have today. Like, for example, eating pork because it was an unclean animal because of what it ate and what it put in and then it transferred over and then god didn't talk about how everything was permissible until the new testament so and that was after jesus's death that everything became clean but so that's where we is at you didn't miss a whole lot <laughs> okay but um i was just gonna tell him um about that the um the story that you was telling me yesterday about the what the post where we won't say who posted it <laughs> about the different about like the tattoo and uh, what was it else was it Tiffany. oh there was lots of things like um not not remarrying because that's wrong and and Oops. and uh I don't know. I don't remember. There's a whole bunch of things. Some of them are still New Testament, but some of them were only for the Old Testament. I don't remember what was all on there. I don't remember. Um, we said discussing last week, like women speaking in the church. Oh, yeah. A lot of that was because it was it wasn't meant for the whole you know, body of Christ. It was meant for that specific time and that specific church because they were very unorganized. And they were getting way out of hand, like um, like he even mentioned in and for that specific church not to that they were coming together and they were having their feast before church and basically they were going to get drunk. <laughs> and he's like, "Don't go and do that." <laughs> so there's a lot of things mm -hmm. that were meant to apply to a certain uh, certain time or certain people, and we can we can glean things out of it. For ourselves but we shouldn't um you know we we can't take one scripture and apply it to everything well it was there for a, a purpose but like you said mainly back then i mean the way they worded things in the bo earlier books of the, of the old testament it was basically because people well even the, some of the ways they explained things i mean they may have given a number for example of how many I don't know, uh, they'd say uh, 100,000 people were all that were needed or something. It, it, it was, some, in some ways, it was allegorical. It was meant to be representative of what God wants, not 
necessarily saying that's the way it is because people back then couldn't even count more than the fingers on their hands. So they had to have some way to communicate or God used yeah. them to communicate to people back then. Now we have a counting system that we understand, well, we sort of understand what a trillion is, but we know that number and we have our mathematics are more sophisticated, for example, um, even back in the Old New Testament. So you don't want to get hung up too much on certain particular numbers. I mean, you have to read it and get the context of it, but, but to take everything for absolute, that's the way it has to be forever, isn't necessarily so. I'm not trying to say that the Bible, yeah. it isn't wrong. It was right uh, for them. Yeah, and a lot of people think it, it, it um, contradicts itself because of that. Well, yeah, see, and, but you're reading over a period of three or 4,000 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, see, the one thing that I like to look at when I think about that, just for an example, is... God told the Jews that he needed them to sacrifice several different animals for several different things every year, all the time, you know, and he said we had to sacrifice those things, but you don't see people running around sacrificing goats and doves and everything today. If we took everything that was in the Bible and said, yes, that's for me right now. But first of all, that was for the Jews, and I'm not a Jew. Yeah. But secondly, if you don't read the Bible in context, you miss the fact that Jesus said, I fulfilled that. I am the ultimate sacrifice. You no longer need any other sacrifices because I washed it all away. If you just take one piece of the Bible and don't read it in context and don't read everything that was written, that's why it's important to study the scriptures entirely and not just a piece at a time. And it's good for people who are starting out to remind them to use, you know, they might start out in the New Testament and they might read it and they might not understand that Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice and that the Jews had to sacrifice animals before then and to cover their sins. They might not understand that, but it's important to use concordances and things like that to go back and look at the scriptures and what they say about it. You might not be able to read the whole Bible in a week, but, you know, you need to read it all together, and you can't just take things out like that, especially if you don't understand it. Well, especially, you know, and, and, and speaking of that, um, for a new Christian or somebody that's just coming in and just beginning, it is a really bad idea to start in the Old Testament, <laughs> because you really need to get an understanding of who Jesus is first. To understand the difference because if you can if you read the Old Testament you can get a really warped sense of who God is because they didn't know who God was they were trying they were exploring and learning that there was this massive God you know and that he created the earth but they didn't know his character in the Old Testament they were exploring and knowing uh, learning his who is his what his character was who he was that he and they didn't realize that he was a god of love until way late in in the right right before the new testament so they start learning this stuff you know so they're learning all the way through the old testament so it's a really good idea to start in the new testament and then go back to the old testament and refer back to it but because you can get like if somebody starts in job i mean he he had no idea who god was <laughs> Well, he, he had an idea, but it wasn't the complete idea. Well, that's the thing. He didn't yeah, know he, God was he God didn't. of love. The, 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 two, the, the three persons concept of what we know as God was not really apparent in the Old Testament. I mean, we knew that there was a promised son, sort of. I mean, they, they were promising a Messiah. And I don't think they really understood what the Messiah was either, because even the Jews in Jesus' day thought he came to re fight the uh, Romans. And that's what the idea was then, even then. Even knowing Jesus, even listening to him, and they still didn't understand that completely. Yeah, they thought he would be yeah. a political uh, savior. Basically. Right. He, would, he would free them politically, not spiritually. They didn't understand that. 
But that's the thing with Job. I mean, Job did not know. I mean, he was a righteous man in God's eyes, but he didn't know God's character. Exactly. I mean, well, he didn't, yeah, like you said, he didn't know the full character. Yeah. So he didn't understand. But they didn't really understand any, a lot of that. They were, like I said, discovering who God was. And it wasn't until Jesus came that they really got a full understanding of who Jesus was, because that's who he taught. He's like, this is who God is. God is love. God is this. So that's why it's important yeah. to really start there and then work your way back. <laughs> the other thing that's important is the fact when Jesus came, he gave the disciples an experience of who God really was because he was God in the flesh. So they got to experience God as a loving God and God as a God who would die for them and lay down his life and serve. And they got to experience that through the Holy spirit. They got to experience it at a deeper level than those in the old Testament did because the Holy spirit came upon them in the old Testament and taught them things, but they didn't have that, one-on-one -on -one experience necessarily to give them that full revelation of who God is. And I think that that's something that we have to take into like in the world today. I feel like that's what happens when especially young Christians or those that are, they don't believe in God or say, you know, that Christianity isn't real or, you know, they have certain beliefs that are, are against what the Bible says, but yet they believe some of the things that the Bible says, and it's just like they don't know what to believe. I think what happens is they listen to what people say about God more than they listen to their own experiences with God and the revelation that God could give them through the Holy Spirit. And I think that's what happens in Job's time and, you know, throughout the Old Testament. A lot of times, they were hearing about who God was through what other people were saying and through what they thought God was and what they said God was, or that they said God did when God's like, I didn't do that at all. What do you say? <laughs> you know, like we have to be really careful because we can't let ourselves build our faith off of what people say about God or what people experience about God. We have to get our own revelation and our own experiences to truly build that faith. Because if we try to, if we try to stand on somebody else's faith, it just doesn't work. <laughs> well, if you, it's if like, you think about it, I mean, if you go to court and you, what you, what you have is second or third hand knowledge, you're saying, is it going to stand up? Are you going to be confident in telling them, well, this is what happened. Well, and this is who this person is. Well, no, because it's second or third hand knowledge. And we do that with mm -hmm. the word of God all the time. We're like, oh, well, I heard about Job and how God did this to Job. And everybody's like, um, did you ever read it? Because if you get through the end of the story, he's like, oh, this was not God. You know, he figures this out towards the end of the story. But um, we do that with the word of God all the time. We, we go by hearsay. And we need to get in there and read it for ourselves and, and find out who God's character is. Well, I, I, you're right. I mean, it doesn't hurt to listen to somebody's testimony about their experience with God. Yeah. But the it can point, be okay, go encouraging. Ahead. Right. It can exactly. be encouraging, but we can't, we can't build our own faith on it. It can right. encourage our faith. But it's not something that we can stand on and stand strong. Because if we don't see it for ourselves and get revelation, it's just well, and, just, and that's why God not work. <laughs> and that's why God in His infinite wisdom had this inspired work of all His words and what He wants us to believe and how we are to uh, interact with Him and other people. Mm -hmm. That's why He had it printed. It, it, otherwise, and because mm -hmm. it's pretty hard. To say, well, no, that's not what God wants because it's here. This is what we believe. This is his word. Mm -hmm. If we go by what somebody else says, like a lot of other religions do, they pass it on from one generation to another, it gets distorted. I, I mean, I've seen testimony of, you'll see a dozen people in a room, and everybody had a different point of view of what actually happened. If they had written it down at that time, you would have had a lot clearer idea of what was going on. And that's why God had this written. That's what, why we have the written word. 
Uh, other yeah. other religions rely on passing it on again and again from that Shinto. I mean, I'm not picking on Shinto in particular, but it, it's all about ancestry and what their ancestors and, and so on is passed on from person to person. It isn't necessarily written down anywhere. So that all this, their viewpoint of God is way, way off. I mean, it's, you know, of course, I believe that. Because but that, the reason why that is, the reason why their vision of God is off is because, like you said last week, we all have this picture that there is a God. We know that there's a creator. I mean, tribes know that there's a creator. But when that happens, like if you play the telephone game, one person starts out with one thing and they whisper it in the ear of the other person. And by the end of the telephone line, they have no idea what was really said. And that's what Satan does is he puts little things in there and causes us to miss what was really said. And next thing you know, you got something that's completely off from what God was saying in the original. Right. And you end up in the hands of Satan before you even realize it because you won't go look and see what God really said. Well, you got to remember in the Old Testament, they didn't have the written word. And that's exactly how it was passed on. It was passed on from generation to generation. Granted, some of the, some of the people back then lived to be 900 <laughs> or even 600. So they were able to tell several generations about it firsthand knowledge. However, it's still just like any story that you tell. Sometimes you leave a lot and give a lot of detail. Sometimes you take, give a little detail. And depending on what, who you told that to, it changes it a little bit. And, and that's where the Holy Spirit comes in. Yeah. That's why we say this is the inspired mm -hmm. word of God. Because yeah. the men who wrote this were listening to God, not other men. I mean, that's basically where they got it from. I mean... God moved people to remember and to write down what he wanted to be in this book. Yeah. So, That's what we believe. So the Ephesians 4 uh, started in like 22. I don't know why it's not. Like, there we go. Um, in, in the uh, Passion Version, this goes right along with what we're talking about. It says, and he, and he has taught you to let go of the lifestyle and, the, and of the ancient man, the old self-life, which was corrupted by sinful and deceitful desires that spring from delusion. Now it's time to be made new by every revelation that's been given to you and be transformed as you embrace the glorious Christ within your life and live in union with him. For God has recreated you all over again in his perfect righteousness and you now belong to him in the realm of true holiness. So discard every form of dishonesty and lying so that you will be known as one who speaks the truth, for we are all belong to one another. And I think in the NIV it says, um, renew your mind. But um, what, what verse was that again? Um, it's Ephesians 4, 22 through uh, 25. Oh, okay. So, um, but that's, um, that's the whole thing is, is you can't renew your mind by somebody else's testimony. <laughs> right. Like Tiffany, that's why I like how it says that now it's time to be made a new, new by every revelation that's been given to you. It takes your own personal revelation to renew your mind, to change the way we think, because we all have a mindset and that mindset has been formed since we were little children, you know, like um, where you're taught you can't do this because this happens. And um, we don't necessarily mean that as bad things, but habits and stuff like that form throughout our, our growing period. And we get stuck in that mindset that something can't happen because this is how the world says it. Right. This is a world law, but that's against totally against God's law. Because God's law is totally the opposite. So until we learn and we get the revelation of that, then we're stuck in that mindset. So I love that verse where he's talking about, like, like Tiffany said, you gotta have the revelation for yourself. Because until you get that revelation, your mindset is stuck. It's not gonna shift until we renew that. Well, and you're not going to grow. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, we read the word and feed ourselves spiritually. 
we eat food to feed ourselves physically. We uh, feed our minds by reading and learning things in this world. But the spiritual part, this is where our spiritual well health comes from, from mm -hmm. reading the word of God and feeding ourselves. If, if we accept what other people say about God in the world, we're not really feeding ourselves spiritually. We're kind of feeding our minds, but not our spirit. Yeah. You know, a couple of weeks ago, so, we about revival. And sorry, Tiffany, just a minute. Um, didn't you? <laughs> but we were talking about re revival. But that's exactly what happened in a revival. They would go off of somebody else's word, and then somebody would read it for themselves, and they're like, whoa, this says that this is for today. It doesn't say that the Holy Spirit was taken away. And then they'd get hungry, and they would get into that. And that's how the revivals would happen, was because they got a fresh fresh revelation of God's word for themselves. Right. Hit me. <laughs> okay, I have something I want to show you guys. This goes, it's just really, something really cool. Oh, you disabled screen sharing, mom. I can't share my screen. Uh, more. Um, <laughs> hold on, I'm trying to figure this out. Uh, I can put you in the waiting room. No, that, that probably wouldn't work. <laughs> If you make your host. Um, I don't know how to undo it. She shared something last week. I know, but um, the, some of the change, settings changed, and I don't know hmm. why. Um, yeah. Isn't isn't there a little thing off to the right there? I, I see it on my screen. Share sound, optimize screen, video clip. Nope. Huh. Hold on. I'm looking. <laughs> Spotlight video. I Did you? Spotlight. Um, I don't know. Can you click on me, me like my picture and yeah, anything? I can mute you. I can stop video. I can chat. Rename. In video. Spotlight video. Make host. Allow record. Maybe. Remove and put waiting room. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, well, that's dumb. Well, can you share your screen, Mom? Yeah. Okay, so um, if you go to my Facebook page, I well, here, I'll just send it to you in Messenger so you can see it. Um, this is just a really cool thing. It's like a data picture that shows all of the cross-references. Here, I'll, show, I'll send it to you, Cliff, too, so you can see it. Okay. Um, all the cross, cross, cross references of the Bible. And it's crazy because it's all written by different people and except inspired by the Holy Spirit. But it's just amazing how it's written over thousands of years and everything. And yet you can cross, cross reference everything. Well, yeah. Just back and forth. That's cool. Which, I... This picture is pretty, really amazing, but. So you send it to me in Facebook. Can... Yeah, yeah, I send it to your Facebook Messenger. Oh, okay, good. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, so if Mom shares her screen, then everybody could see it. Yeah, she can. That's really the miracle of today. I mean, we have so many ways to communicate, so many ways to read the Bible, so many ways to study it. It's it's fantastic, and I and I said that last week that that's what Jesus probably was talking about when he said, you're going to be able to do greater things than I have, you know, and, and people kind of misunderstood that or must have been scratching their heads. Well, how can we do something that's greater than God? But, oops. Oh, there it is. There it is. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it's just colored, but it's just, it shows six, 63,779 cross references in the Bible. Wow. Oh, mom clicked wow. on it. And I can't read it. So, I mean, to me, that's pretty amazing that they took the time to show this. But the fact that one cross reference from the very end could go to the very beginning and back and forth all over the place, span over 1,500 years in three different continents, like 40 different authors. That's insane. Yeah. Like they said, you could write one book written by one one author that kind of a cross reference makes sense but when you look at the bible and the fact that you can cross reference that many times all over the place like that's how you know that the holy spirit 
is the reason why the Bible is written the way it is. <laughs> well, it's amazing that it's over 1,500 years. I mean, it's just, this isn't like all these people had something really in common other than they believed in God. Um, but I mean, to span that many years and all those different cross references incredible. That in itself is yeah. incredible. Yeah. That's cool. Okay, back. There you go. It was neat. Thank you, Tiff. Yeah, that, that's yeah. cool. I mean, because you can look at something in Revelation and it'll cross reference to something clear back in the New Testament. Right. And we have 10 minutes already. Wow. But Revelations is kind of a, a different animal. I, I've talked to uh, a number of pastors that. I've gotten different answers about the same verse. You know, it's like, but but that, 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 that's the thing is the Holy Spirit will reveal reveal to you a different person depending on the situation they're in or yeah. something different layers to one verse. Right. True. So you never well, in a sense it's kinda like it's kinda like looking at the fact that we can read what Jesus said and the disciples were right there with them. They heard what Jesus said. We can read what Jesus said, and we know exactly how it works in our lives because right. it happened then. And we have progressive revelation of watching what Jesus said come to pass. The disciples, when Jesus spoke it, they know Jesus said it. They know what it says, but they didn't have the experience or, the, well, they didn't have the Holy Spirit at that time. Yes, yeah. but they eventually did when the Holy Spirit came. And when the Holy Spirit came, they started to understand more of Jesus's words and what he said. But Revelation's different because a lot of Revelation is, it hasn't happened yet. Right. right. So it's, it's a little bit harder to understand it <laughs> well, because. Parables. Yeah. Well, yeah. And he, but he, that's. These were all visions, you know, I mean, uh, mm -hmm. so it's like having a dream and, and you thought, you think to yourself when you wake up, like, what was that all about? You know, why did I dream this? <laughs> I mean, most of the time it's just maybe junk in your mind, but on other times, there's times when I've had dreams about somebody or something, and I'm thinking, there's something going on there. I need to find out what's happening. And, and then you go and talk to this mm -hmm. person, you find out they've had an issue that's been going on for a long time, and you're actually able to help them or at least pray for them. Hello? Yeah, sorry. I had to heat up my tea. My tea got cold. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was reading something Tiffany sent me. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> but uh, we have seven minutes left. So, no, um, it, it's interesting, you know, how everything kind of goes together. But, um, I mean, the, the whole, the whole, the whole thing is, is we have to get a revelation for ourselves and we can't rely on, on what somebody else says and when when you do rely on what somebody else says first of all people are fallible <laughs> we, we make mistakes we read things um, that wrongly or we mean say when so we talked to Tiffany and I was talking about this yesterday people mean to say one thing but it comes out differently so other people get the wrong impression of who God is because they don't, they're not glean, gleaning into it or, you know, people are, they make mistakes and they say things that they didn't mean to say, it's not wrong. So it's really important to have that revelation for yourself so that you can judge the words of what other people are saying. Right. It gives you a, a backdrop of, <clears throat> gives you some background into what, they're saying to you, and if if it's really true, and, and like, like we've said before, the more you read this, the more you're going to be closer to God and understand through the Holy Spirit right. what He wants us to do and how to act and so on. Yeah. Uh, if there's anything I get from this, as we've been talking over the last few weeks, it's that don't be discouraged because you don't understand a particular passage. Keep reading. Read before and after that passage. Yeah. Read the rest of the Bible. That's just like Tiffy said. You, you need to read the whole thing. It, you don't have to have it all at once to really be a believer, but, but you need to keep reading, keep growing. 
that's the whole part. But if mm-hmm. you stop doing that, you let, let yourself open to Satan's lies. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. Most of us now are. And that's. Go ahead. It's, that's why it's so important to have a foundation. Right. And I think that's the most important thing. And for me, when I see people posting those kind of posts, like mom mentioned earlier and everything, and it just breaks my heart because most people post those things and they don't have that foundation of the context of scripture and the reason why those laws are put into place and why God said what he said at that time or, you know, all those things. And it breaks my heart because if you don't understand scripture fully or if you don't have the wisdom to go and ask somebody you know instead of just basing your beliefs right off of what you the first thing somebody says about that first scripture yeah and that's the thing satan did the exact same thing to jesus he took a scripture right out and said this is what the scripture says right and he tried to use it in the wrong way and jesus knew better of course and jesus corrected him and he said but the scripture says do not test the lord your god you know, and it, it just breaks my heart when people base their first impression or their first belief on that first scripture. What would have Jesus done had he trusted Satan <laughs> and based his faith off of what Satan said about the scriptures? Jesus would have jumped off a cliff and died. And that's what a lot of times we do is we base our beliefs off that first, the first thing that we hear about that scripture that we don't fully understand and we jump off a cliff. Yeah. And if we're not careful, we are end up completely off. So we need to build our foundation. Yep, we're gonna have to continue this tonight. So <laughs> we have three minutes yeah. to close in prayer. So do you, Tiffany, do you think you can do it in three minutes or you want me to pray? <laughs> yeah, I'll watch the time. I'll make sure I finish. Three minutes, go. Father, I just thank you for this time that we have together and I thank you that we are reminded to study your scriptures and to study your word and just grow with you. And Lord, I just pray as we study together and as we speak and that whoever watches this would be encouraged and reminded that even if you don't understand what you're reading right now, it's okay. The Holy Spirit has got your back and he wants to show you these things. He wants to show you the scripture and let it come to life in you and through you. And Lord, I just ask that you would use your Holy Spirit through us to bring to life the scriptures to other people, that they would have a hunger for your word. And I just thank you and I praise you for all that we're learning together and all that we're being reminded of. And I just pray that you would encourage us and give us strength to stand on your word, even when the world seems like it's falling apart around us that we would be reminded that you are the rock, that you are who we should stand on and you cannot be shaken. If we stand upon the rock, we will never be shaken. There is a scripture in the word that says we have entered a kingdom that cannot be shaken. We are children of God and if we trust and rely on you, we cannot be shaken. There's nothing that could face us. So Father, I just pray that you would continue to encourage us, continue to encourage other people as they watch this and just be a light and just come to life, come alive with your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All righty.